This is the Buddha speaking to Bahia. In that case, Bahia, you should train yourself thus. In what is seen, there must be only what is seen. In what is heard, there must only be what is heard. In what is sensed, there must be only what is sensed. In what is cognized, there must be only what is cognized. This is the way you should train yourself. And since for you, in what is seen, there will be only what is seen, in what is heard, there will only be what is heard, in what is sensed, there will only be what is sensed, in what is cognized, there will be only what is cognized, therefore you will not be with that. And since you will not be with that, therefore you will not be in that. And since you will not be in that, therefore you will not be here or hereafter or in between the two. Just this is the end of suffering. This sutta is talking about the actual seeing or the experiencing instead of putting or attaching the sense of I or self into the actual experience that is occurring. So when there is no I in the experience, then subject and object have totally been destroyed. All there is is pure experience, pure seeing, pure cognizing, pure sensing, and pure hearing. So when you say that it's pure, it pure means that you don't have any craving on it, or you you don't have any expectation on it. Yeah, and, and when I say pure, I mean to say there is no craving, and the craving is interlinked with the sense of self, the notion of self or the conceit. So, if it is pure, then there will be only the seeing or there will only be the experiencing. Therefore, that means there will be no I that is seeing, but there is only the seeing. And since there is no I in the seeing, there is no craving. And since there is no craving, there is no suffering. Some people, they, they, they describe a, a kind of practice like they said, you just think of yourself as, as the, the people go to the theater to watch the movie. You are just watching a movie. You, you are just the audience. Is, you're just watching the movie. Is it the attitude we should hold? Of practicing? That, that is a good practice to apply when you're doing the jhana practice, actually. When you look at your object of meditation, you're watching it like you're watching a movie. And then when you get distracted, you can realize, oh, I'm no longer watching, so I have to apply the six R's. So you apply the six R's and you keep watching. In everyday life and everyday daily activities, as you are doing activities, you can just observe it and make what you're doing the activity itself without the sense of I being involved in the activity. So you could say it's kind of like watching a movie, but even saying that you're watching yourself doing something, there is still the subtle concept. There is still the subtle concept of I, a subtle conceit of I am. A subtle craving so it has to be done in a way or it would be done in a way where it's just the activity going on and there's mindfulness of the activity so one person could say oh but you just replaced the sense of watching with mindfulness yes mindfulness and watching is the same thing but the attitude that you're doing it with is that there is no self there experiencing it. It's just the experience happening. It's just the activity that you're doing. When, for example, you are eating, you are mindful of the eating, but you are not mindful of you eating, you're mindful of the activity that is happening, which is eating. So when you're mindful of the body, you're not mindful of you in the body, you're mindful of what is the body doing. 